Hi, we're here with Caitlin Dunn from My Racehorse, and we're gonna talk about one of their upcoming stars, in my opinion, Real Savvy. Caitlin, can you talk about your background with Real Savvy? Because you've known him for longer than the general public. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Real Savvy, he's a he's kind of a cool horse to me. Um, my dad has way retrieve stables, and we buy yearlings to sell them as two-year-olds. So um Pretty much every year, the sale, I'll work some sales, yearly sales with my dad, just going and looking at horses to bring home. And then the usual one for me to work with him is the New York bread sale where we where we ended up buying Real Savvy. Um, and he made my dad's shortlist. So we were actually in there. My dad was trying to buy him for himself. And we got outbid by my racehorse, um, which was kind of crazy. So I knew that my dad really liked the horse just physically when we were there. Um, and it had been pretty hard to buy authentics that year. They were, you know, they were going for a lot of money. It was his first season or his first crop of yearlings. And, um, we were pretty excited when they said that, you know, we would get to break him and, and get him started out. So, uh, he was always a big boy. Uh, when he walked off the van, I think my dad was like, oh my gosh, he's grown like a foot since I saw him a, like a week ago. Um, so that was a little bit daunting. He kind of looked like a giraffe and had a lot of pieces and parts to put together and bless him. I mean, he was scared of his own shadow. He was very nervous and didn't really know what everything was about. So he was one that we we tried to take our time with, you know, really just made sure he was comfortable with everything he was doing. And we really felt like Kristoff, like Joe and our um, our bloodstock team had placed him, you know, aptly with Kristoff, who actually bred him. So Kristoff owns the mare, and he's one of our partners on him, which is really cool. So um, it was a really good fit. We thought that he'd really blend into that program well, which is really important. It's like a kid picking a college, you know, so you want them to have a good experience. Um, Kristoff took his time. We weren't really sure that he would race at the Saratoga meet at all, and we were okay with that because he was going through these growth spurts, and he was mentally trying to, you know, put all the pieces together and, and figure it out. And his first race was really, really exciting. Like we, we felt really good about him, you know, or sorry, not his first race, his second race, his first race, we were like, that's definitely real savvy. He was like, Whoa, he looked at the stands and he was like, I don't know about this. And then his next race, we felt good about it. And then obviously he just blew him out of the water in his last race, which was really, really fun to see. So yeah, he's been a cool horse to kind of get to watch and see him grow mentally and physically. <laughs> you know, it's interesting about him too, because the first race I noticed was on the dirt and mm -hmm. you guys switch him to the turf. And to me yeah. in that second race, he really flashed like brilliance. Honestly, Caitlin, was that your impression too? Absolutely. It was one of those things. Um, when my dad starts horses off, we're very uh, European. So my dad's from Ireland. So we do a lot on the grass. We actually keep them on the grass course doing figure eights and, you know, doing different kind of lattices and stuff like that before we take them to the racetrack. Cause we want them to figure out how to use their whole body. And he was always very comfortable on that grass. So we, my, my dad kind of had a feeling that he would be very, you know, grassy. Uh, I think, you know, Kristoff, you always want to start them on the dirt typically just to see if that's where they're going to be, especially with authentic, you know, winning the Derby, winning the you know breeders cup classic like you got to give it a shot so we did and they were like you know what we're going to put him on the grass just from training not to breeze or do any kind of fast work we're just going to let him go out there and gallop and i remember i went and i saw miguel clement uh christoph's son and his assistant i was like how did you think it went he goes he just lit up when he got on the on the grass you could just see he was just this different horse he was really excited and really confident in himself so it was one of those, he just took to it really well. Um, and he was like, my only complaint is that he was too excited. Like, I guess he just really wanted to go the minute he got onto the grass. So I think from there, they were like, okay, grass is definitely going to be our best bet here. Um, which definitely showed in his second race. And, you know, he, he definitely gave us, I thought we were going to win. I really thought we were going to win with him that day. We had everyone there and it was, that was the only bummer. I was like, oh, he's so close. Um, but it was great to see him, you know, win second time out or third time out. Sorry. I kind of like written off the first race. I'd like to just throw that one away if we could. Um, but no, they've done, they've done such a great job with him, the Clement barn. I think so too. And with that said, this third race is so exciting we had to have an expert in to watch it with us. So, Caitlin, would you mind we're watching it together? Yeah, I don't know about expert, but I'm happy happy to watch it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Caitlin, we're watching his uh, most recent race over at Belmont Park at the Big A. <laughs> and oh, yeah. 
So here we go. They break from the gate, and right off the bat, you can see he's he's in a great position right down there on the rail. Mm -hmm. For sure. And one thing that I always like to note, like, he, you can see that he's not wearing uh, blinkers, but he does have that shadow roll on. Shadow rolls can be super, like, if I ever see a horse that's, like, running with a shadow roll for the first time, I typically put a couple dollars on them. Because it actually kind of mimics what blinkers do. It takes their focus down and helps high-headed horses drop their heads and they use their bodies a little bit more and he is very high headed so like with that big shadow roll on he's kind of like eased into it a little bit more and you can just see he's stretching out and he just it gets really easy from here to comment on it really doesn't it <laughs> he never looks back <laughs> no one thing that stands out though is it looks like he ate one of those horses for dinner this is a massive looking horse he's huge and that's the thing when he debuted at saratoga i remember maggie wolfendale just fell in love with him in the paddock but she was like, this is not your typical two-year-old. He is giant. He is, he towers over everybody, which sometimes can be a little bit concerning because you never want them to be too big for their own good and not have turn of foot or they get too heavy. And that's really hard on their, you know, knees, ankles, everything like that. Best thing about him, he's very proportionate. So he doesn't carry a lot of really heavy weight. He has good bone and he just, his size works for him, which is good, but he's definitely going to, love distance as we can definitely see from this but yeah just never never really made it look like a competition everyone was just running for a second so yeah he made that look very easy and i mean i'm loving this i don't know if we get to see it here yet but the gallop out i mean i was very impressed i got chills it reminded me of like straight no chasers maiden it reminded me of these horses that just go yeah. on to do good things did you get that feel too yeah, I mean, he just went to the lead and never looked back. And, you know, you kind of love to see he's got his ears pricked. He's a happy camper running around there. He knows that he did it, um, which is always good, too. You know, you hope that they fall in love with that feeling because they are very – they're competitive animals. Like, they know when they win. They know when they lose. So now he gets to see what the winner circle is about. Hopefully he likes to stay in there and, you know, continues on with it. But he actually just shipped down to my dad um, – last week so he's back at waiver tree just getting the winter off it's going to get super cold in new york obviously for the win you know the winter months so he'll get to vacay in florida he's a bit of a snowbird and um he'll go back to work um you know next year early next year caitlin now that we've watched this i guess the big question on everyone's mind is what kind of campaign or anything can we expect from this horse next year do you have any insight at all like or what you'd like to see him do you know i i don't have any real insight with him as of right now but obviously when you have a, a turf horse like him um that's showing some promise you know breeders cup kind of you know bookends the year you always want to try and aim towards something like that that's a very lofty goal um another really cool thing to aim for is you know Winning a stakes race at Saratoga is always fun. Hopefully, um, we go win some really cool New York New York bred races and you know pick up pick us pick up some checks there. That would be amazing. He really does strike me though, Caitlin. What I saw there is like a horse that can take on open company. And as he matures, because he's so big, I'm very excited to see down the line what he becomes. So. Yeah, this is a very exciting horse. So thank you so much for your insight on him. And yeah, real savvy. Look forward to seeing what happens next with him. For sure.